Hey there, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to another brand new installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. My name is Tom Rigsby, your host. Uh, I don't know, for the next 7 minutes or so. Good morning, Joe. Hey, listen, if you are watching live or watching on the replay, do what Joe just did. Leave a comment, say hi. And if you're watching on YouTube, awesome. Hit that subscribe button. Ring the bell so you get notified when... A new update is available. If you're listening on your favorite podcast catcher, you are fantastic. But all of you have to head over to 7minutesinthemorning.com so that you can get in on the conversation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Catherine. You are welcome to try and annoy me today. Uh, oop, wrong mouse. I, I've got a... Um, so I, I have an interesting... Look, it's almost time for football, right? And so, the uh, the good mug came out this morning. So I wanted to see where... Okay, so all right, I got it now. So, what I wanted to talk about <clears throat> this morning is the power of expectations. Right? I have said, you probably heard me say a couple of times, <laughs> that uh, frustration is a function of expectation. And the quote that I used in the title today from Henry Ford... Whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you are right. You're correct. All right? The, the power, and, and look, here's the example I love to use, right? If you go into the bank and you believe that that trip into the bank or the post office, even better, you believe that the, that trip into the post office should take five minutes and it takes 15 minutes, you come out, you're upset. If you go in believing it'll take 30 minutes and it takes 15 minutes, then you're happy. The only difference is what your expectation was of that encounter. So now I want to, I was thinking about this this morning. Um, you know, my team's ranked number one, and the other team in Alabama is ranked number nine in the preseason poll. So, how powerful of an expectation does it set? I mean, all of these teams. All they hear through training camp is you got to work to be the best. You got to work hard to be number one. You got to work hard to beat the team that's ahead of you. What do you tell the team that's number one? I mean, you got to work hard to stay on top. Okay, I can get that. Everybody's going to be gunning for you. You got to be prepared. Okay, I get that. But how powerful of an expectation is it if you believe that you're the best and the poll says you're the best? Do you believe that they're going to walk out on that field believing they can win every game? Probably. Now, here's the flip side. Let's see who's at the bottom. Oh, man, another SEC team. If you're LSU and you're ranked number 25, do you really have a hope of getting to the top? I mean, do you start the season thinking, okay, if we go out there and win every game, we can make it? It's a long way to go. And and a lot of a lot of expectation to overcome. Right? If you I mean you just go out and just look at how many how many good teams are ahead of you. How do you how do you do that? Alright, so here's where the, the real power of expectation comes in. Each one of these teams now, before the season begins, has an opportunity to define what success means for them. For the teams near the top, clearly their expectation is. The expectation, their definition of success is to win the whole thing. The teams at the bottom, I mean, what's their expectation? What's their definition of success? A winning season to win more games than you lose? Maybe to beat somebody that's ranked higher than you? Maybe somebody that's in the top five? You know, if, say, you're LSU, you're starting out here at the bottom, but you beat the number one ranked team. Was that a successful season? If you prepared yourself for next time, for next year, is that a successful season? All right, so so now let's apply that. <coughs> Catherine's giving me a hard time for my choice of team names. 
She also says that you have to work hard to be the best you can be so that you can be better than you were yesterday. Only you can win and only you can lose. <laughs> yeah, or the Cleveland Indians. Yeah, that Joe's got a good point. I like Catherine's point there. Only you can win and only you can lose. Opportunity is a set of circumstances. Right? There's however many there are, 12? 11, 12, I don't know. How many, however many games they're going to play before they get in the playoffs this year. There are 11 opportunities for another team to beat that number one team. 11 chances. The table is set for that team to come in and upset the, the, higher, <clears throat> the higher ranked team. So it's an opportunity. The set of circumstances exist. But as to Catherine's point, only they can win or lose the game. So how does this apply to you? What are you going to take away from this this morning? What are you looking at? You know, I asked you on Monday, you know, what's something you have avoided doing? What's something you've been putting off doing? Usually, and when I ask you, even now, you know already what it is. You're going to start negotiating with yourself that, well, no, that's not really a problem, but it really is. Right. So what's that thing that you've been point, putting off that you've been looking at and thinking, man, that, that's pretty big. I don't, I don't know. I, let me do something to build up to that. Right. Set an expectation that you're going to win. Set an expectation that, that you are going to accomplish that outcome, that you're going to reach that big, hairy, audacious goal that you set for yourself, and you're going to do it before the end of the year. <coughs> Time limits. Oh no. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Must need another sip of coffee. <sighs> Set that expectation and then go out and do the work. Your mind has a magnificent way of finding ways to make it work once you decide that that's what you want to do. But you can't call on that part of your brain, on that part of your mind, until you set the expectation. Speak it out loud. Say it out loud. Tell somebody. There are a lot of people that believe you shouldn't tell other people your goals like that because they'll think you're crazy. I think you should do it because then you're committed. It's just kind of like jumping in the deep end of the pool. Sink or swim. So, Share with me in the comments what you're going to accomplish before the end of the year. What's that big, hairy, audacious goal, that thing you've been putting off, avoiding, or otherwise procrastinating on that you're going to get knocked out and done by the end of the year? If you will do that, I will make the commitment to you that not only I, but the whole community here at 7 Minutes in the Morning will support you in your endeavor because you've got the guts to put it out there in front of everybody and let people know what you're going to do. If you aren't playing in the box, then they probably already think you're crazy. They know I'm crazy. That's the whole point. All right, it's Wednesday. That means coffee shop show. We should be up and going here in about two hours, right at 9 o'clock. You can tune in back here. Make sure that's working. Yeah, you can tune in back here. Um, ooh, four books by the end of the year. There you go, Catherine. You write them or publish them? They're all your books? <clears throat> we'll publish four books by the end of the year. Catherine has thrown down the gauntlet and uh, accepted the challenge. Who else is going to commit to something here in the community? All right, Coffee Shop Show, 9 o'clock. Be back here. You can find it here, 7minutesinthemorning.com. Thecoffeeshopshow.com, I think, is working now. And, or you can always come by. Just join us live. Old Town Coffee and beautiful downtown five points i'll be back here again tomorrow with another installment of seven minutes in the morning till then you guys have a wonderful wednesday we'll talk to you tomorrow